absolutely over the moon with that. Oh, mate, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> Blinding. Thanks for choosing to watch the video and I am chuffed to bits to say that we are tench fishing again um, and I'm specifically exploring uh, certainly in the first part of the video uh, my early season tench fishing so when I say early season I'm talking sort of like April maybe even late March and what I wanted to share with you is something quite specific that I found in my tench fishing particularly early season is this idea of exploring shallow lakes now where I think I might have gone wrong in the past is just starting uh, starting the season, trying to catch that big fish from quite a big deep lake and to be honest, really, really struggling. Something else that's cool about shallow lakes is that they lend themselves really well to float fishing, don't they? And that's just that's something that I've really been enjoying in the tench fishing. Started off on the fine line of floats, Move to the quill floats once those arrived on the doorstep. For all my float fishing, I really use the glide rod. It's a 13 foot rod. On the reels, I was using anything between sort of eight and 10 pound line, which might sound a bit, a bit stiff for float fishing, but the pads were just starting to come up. I couldn't see them, but they were submerged in the water. They were starting to come up and there's a reasonable head where there's a good head of carp in that lake. So we do want to make sure that we got a strong enough tackle to land those, we don't want to be leaving tackle and fish. So um, uh, I'm fishing the float, as I mentioned. I'm fishing that um, the, the basic lift method. So I've got the Olivet underneath it. The Olivet's going to sit on the bottom. And yeah, I'm just literally, you'll get two types of bite, won't you, when you're fishing the lift method. It's either going to slide away or it's going to lift up, the classic sort of lift. Uh, and that's, that's what we're looking for. In terms of the hook, I was using a size 14 hook. If I was using maggots, if I was using worms, I was just gonna go very slightly larger than that. But enough about the rigs and the methods, let's get out there for our first tent sessions of the year. If I get a fish in the first swim, I can move to the second swim because that first swim will be so disrupted that I probably won't get, I'd have to wait ages for another bite. That's the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm not sure if I'm gonna need both spots, but you know, I have baited up a couple just with a few hands of maggots, but hopefully we'll get a bite in the first swim. We won't even need to go to the other one. Okay. Nice light float rod. It is a tench. It's a good one. I didn't think they went that big in it. I thought it was fighting like a calf. But it's not. It's quite a nice tench. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes. Well, that rocked. <laughs> Beautiful catch him on a float rod. What a fight. <laughs> Look at him. Cracking. Ah, a really nice tench. Wasn't expecting anything like this today. Um, but yeah, stunning. Caught on a float. A lovely way to catch them. Absolutely over the moon with that. Bait application has been kept really simple, trickling in maggots, not too many, you know, little and often, and then just a nice juicy lobworm on the hook. The main thing for me is just to keep those maggots going in, you know, steady, not too many, just a pinch at a time. Well, that's a fish out the first swim. Uh, I'm now gonna go to the next one. Obviously, when I returned that fish, I baited up the first swim, if that makes sense, with more maggots, went round to the other swim, but to be fair, it wasn't really happening there. And within half an hour, I found myself back where I started. Yes, we've got another one on. Hopefully it's another tench. Feels kind of similar to the last one, and it is. 
Fantastic, love it. Are some pads out in front of me, so I am having to be a little bit careful. Just trickling in maggots seems to be doing the trick. Trickling in maggots, little and often, and eventually it slid away. Lovely, lovely touch. Well, it had gone quiet, but we stayed patient and we got another one. Lovely, lovely early season tench on the float, right in the edge, on the worms. Lovely. Well, I think that's me done. Um, it's only, only been a short session. I've only managed a couple of fish, but that's all right. It is really quite cold. You know, it's only mid-April. It's not really warmed up properly. Uh, I think what I'm going to have to do is come back, have another go once it's warmed up a bit. So as you can see on that session, I yeah, I did have a thick coat on, it was pretty cold, and I know I mentioned it at the start, but I do think in my mind, uh, yeah, it does seem clear to me that I feel like in subsequent seasons, for me personally, I feel like I want to start on the shallower lakes, or smaller lakes, um, you know, don't try and be a hero too early, too quick on these big deep lakes, you know, their time will come. The, the, the thing is about the big deep lakes, obviously, the issue here is that they just take longer to warm up. You know, these shallower lakes, they're going to warm up much more quickly and the tents are going to be much more active and you're going to stand a much better chance of catching those in my opinion, in the shallower lakes rather than the deep ones, you know. Um, you know, once you've had a few fish from the shallow lakes and built up your confidence a bit and had a bit of fun like I have with float fishing and da 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 da, -da once you've done that, then maybe you can move on to the deeper lakes and uh, yeah, maybe try try for that larger fish once you've, once you've got going. So my tench fishing continued. By now I'd switched to using the center pin and I'd been filming a video for Corum where I was using some stunning new quilt floats. Uh, if you've not seen that video, then I'll put a link on screen here somewhere for you to go over, watch that video, watch me fishing with the center pin and the quill floats and catching some really, really nice tench. <music> and even though it had warmed up a bit, I knew the deep lakes weren't ready, so made a point of targeting these shallower lakes on the pin. So I was happy with that, some nice tench from Macoran video. However, when I visited another lake that I haven't been to for a couple of years, things didn't go exactly according to plan. This is what we're after. Feels like it could be. big hard fight on green. Didn't even know they were in. <laughs> oh, out trying to catch a tench. I got that. Got a good sized green. Not what I'm after though. So I'm gonna get the barnacle old fella back. So on this short session, I was only there an hour or so, I caught six bream. Wherever possible, I simply just unhooked them in the water and just let them swim off. I then gave up and thought maybe I'd try and come back another day and see if I can get past these bream. You might have noticed in the initial video I was using a fixed ball. By now I'd moved to using a center pin. Uh, these are the center pins that I'm using and I'm just gonna quickly take you through them now. One of the main pins that I'm using, uh, they're both made by JW Young and Sons. Uh, the main one that I'm using is called the Triton. I'm loading that up with eight or 10 pound lines, a quite strong line. And what I like about this pin, I'm sort of using it for specimen fish, like, like you know, my barbel fishing, my chub, and, and here. 
for, for some of the tench. The other pin that I'm using is a Trudex and it's a Trudex Mark III and I've decided to load this up with lighter line and I'm using it for sort of like smaller species. So I might only have four pound line on this. Uh, I might use it for things like, certainly I used it in the winter for, for my roach fishing on the river. Um, you can use it for rod. Um, so I've kind of set it up for those sort of like slightly smaller species. However, in this clip, I decided to use it for the tench uh, because uh, I just, I, I knew there was a chance of some crusions. Uh, so I wanted to go in with a little bit more finesse. And I was fairly confident that if I was fairly careful with the way I played these fish, I probably would be okay on four pound line. And I've got to say, they are absolutely stunning center pins that have been an absolute joy to fish uh, with for a, for a range of species, you know, whether you're trotting or, or like here, fishing for tent or crusions or whatever, just, just stunning, stunning centre pin reels. So on to the next session, and it carried on in the same vein, being plagued by some nuisance fish, these time of a, a very familiar kind for me, uh, but not actually what I was targeting on the day. That's not what we're after. Oh, there you go. It's a better fish. And <laughs> perch are all over me. We're having problems with these at the moment. There we are. Quite a nice rod. Smashing. I said to you, didn't I? If it feels like you're going to get anything now, it'll be yeah, a two. Yeah, you could tell it wasn't. <laughs> what are you doing, you f***er? Trying to get underneath what? the f***ing... It knows all the tricks, doesn't it? Oh, it's quite a good nice one, mate. <laughs> Whoa, mate! I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I might move around. I'll take it. And with a bit of patience, I managed to catch the biggest tench I've ever caught on the float from that particular venue. Blinding, lost the light completely, time to go home. So that's my early tench sessions. Um, again, uh, I do think it has reinforced in my own mind to target the, the, the shallower lakes in early season. Let me know what you think. Uh, do you think there's something in it? I do. I think those deeper lakes, uh, they just take longer to warm up. And, and I would say, you know, if you're um, struggling to catch tench and you're looking on social media and loads of other people seem to be catching tench and you're not, it might be that you're not doing anything wrong at all. They might just be on shallower lakes that have just woken up sooner. Uh, you know, you might just be on a deeper lake. So possibly something to consider for early season next year. Thanks as always for choosing to watch the video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to like and subscribe and all that stuff. And I will see you in the next one.